say hello and how do you do to all our friends and our teachers too. Good morning, good morning. It's a good, 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 good morning. Good morning, Great R. Are you ready for another day of school? Good, me too. But before we get started, let's put our hands together and close our eyes and say our good morning prayer. Thank you, God, for the beautiful day. Thank you for my mommy, my daddy, my brother, my sister. Thank you for my school. Thank you for my teachers. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. Okay, great R. Are you ready to count from 0 to 100? Good. Make sure to pronounce those numbers nice and clearly and do the action so we can wake up our muscles. Are you ready? Let's go. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Good stuff. Okay, I think next we should count in twos. Let's go. Make sure to pronounce those numbers nice and clearly. Okay? Zero, two, four, six. Eight, ten. Good. Now, great R, since it's getting a little bit chilly, I think we should have a tea party. Are you ready to have a tea party with me? And when we have our tea party, we count in tens. Are you ready? So, get your teas ready. And let's go. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Very nice, great arm. Now, should we count backwards from 10? Let's go. So what are we going to do? Our rocket ship. Good. So I'm going to use the table, but you mustn't use the table. I'm just going to use it so that you can all see me. So remember when we do our rocket ship, Feet shoulder width apart, chest up uh, nice and strong, back nice and straight, so we don't fall over. Okay, so 
Hands above our head and let's go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off. Okay. Great arm. Before we get into our theme and our work, can we please revise our days of the week, our months of the year, and our seasons? So should we start with our days of the week song? Good. Who remembers how many days are in a week? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven days. There are seven days. There are seven days in the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Good morning, Great R. So, as you remember, this week we spoke about road safety and stranger danger. This week, I am, well today, I am dressed up as a traffic officer. So remember we spoke about if you don't follow the rules on the road, the traffic officers are there and they're going to write you a fine and all of, and if you're not following the rules of the road. That's what I'm going to do today. So, what is this? This is a stop sign. As you can see, this is a little bit small for me, but it's not made for me. It is made for you, but I'm just borrowing it. Okay, so this is a stop sign. So what do you need to do at the stop sign? You need to... Stop! Very good. If we get to a traffic light or a robot and the light turns red, what do I need to do? I need to stop. If it is orange, what do I need to do? I need to slow down. And if the light is green, I know I can go. Isn't that right? Now, we are going to speak about the zebra crossing. So, am I allowed to just run across the road? No. I need to stop. I need to look left. I need to look right. And I need to look left again. If I can see that it, that it is safe to go, then I can cross the street. Which other sense do I need to use when crossing the street? My ears. I need to listen. I need to listen if there are cars coming really fast. So if I can hear them coming really fast, I know it's better for me to just wait before I cross the road. Then we spoke about safety belts. Great R, are you allowed to sit in the front of the car? No. You sit at the back of the car on your booster chair or in your car chair and you need to be strapped in guys because once again if mom or dad need to slam on brakes for some reason at least you are safe and secure in your chair so can you play wrestling games at the back of your at mommy and dad's car with your brother or sister no because that means you're probably not strapped in and number two you can distract the driver okay so if mom or dad shouting at you at the back of the car they're not watching the road okay guys cool so then we spoke about other signs like the speed limit or those kinds of things. So I want you to keep an eye on mom and dad when they drive. Are they stopping at stop streets? Are they following the, the um, speed limits of the road? All of those kinds of things. Okay, guys. Then we also spoke this week about stranger danger. Guys, if you are uncomfortable with somebody, even if you have met them before, you are allowed to say, mm, I don't feel comfortable. I don't want to hug you. Hello. Or you are allowed to say, mom, dad, I don't want to go into that person's house. That is okay, guys. Even though you are children and you are small, you have rights. And you have the right to feel comfortable and the right to feel safe. Okay. So, like I said, if somebody comes up to you in the shop and says, oh, please come with me. I can't find my mom. Even if it's a child, great R. I can't find my mom. Do you think it's a good idea for you to leave wherever you were and go and help somebody find their mom? No, because what if it is a trap? So, if somebody does that to you, whether it's a child, whether it's an adult, whether it's an old lady, it doesn't matter. Even if it is a policeman, 
afraid of. You are allowed to scream. So I want you to say, Mom, Dad, I'm going to practice my scream. And I want you to scream as loud as you can. Make sure that no one is sleeping in your house, please. Um, I want you to practice, guys. I want you to attract attention. Because like I said, if you are screaming like that, someone is likely to come up to you and say, are you okay? What is wrong? And you can say, I don't know this person. All right. But this week, our art is going to be based around road safety. So, over here, I have given you two art activities. This one is just an extra one. So, if you have a big box lying around at home, then you can make your own car. So, this little boy's made a fire truck. And look, you can use your fire truck hat that you made last week. All you need to do is cut off the top and the bottom of the box. Or you can even just cut it and then fold them in. You are then going to use either paper plates or you are going to cut out circles and paint them black as your tires. And how many tires does a car have? Four. You are then going to use colored cardboard or yellow or paper and then color it in yellow or paint it yellow and you can make two little lights and then you can make a windscreen so you can just get a white piece of paper or you can paint a white square it's totally up to you and you are going to make your own car all right then you can get string or if you want you can just hold it up and you stand inside your car and you can roll around in your new wheels <laughs> Then we are going to play the traffic light game. So over here, I want you to cut out three circles. Red, orange, and green. And I want you to play the traffic light game with mom and dad. So how that works is first you can have a turn and then mom and dad can have a turn. So just walking around the house, I want you to hold up your different colored um traffic lights and if it's red then what do mom and dad need to do they need to stop if you hold up the orange light okay my baby so today's story we will be reading mr greedy and this is also from our mr men collection mr greedy Mr. Greedy liked to eat. In fact, Mr. Greedy loved to eat, and the more he ate, the fatter he became. And the trouble was, the fatter he became, the more hungry he became. And the more hungry he became, the more he ate. And then the more he ate, the fatter he became. And so it went on. Mr. Greedy lived in a house that looked rather like himself. It was a roly-poly sort of house. Oops. One morning, Mr. Greedy awoke rather early than usual. Rather earlier than usual. He'd been dreaming about food, as usual, and that made him wake up feeling hungry, as usual. So, Mr. Greedy got up, went downstairs, and ate the most enormous breakfast. This is what Mr. Greedy had for his breakfast. Toast, two slices, cornflakes, one packet, milk, one bottle, sugar, one bowlful, Toast, three slices, eggs, three boiled, toast, four slices, butter, one dish, marmalade, one pot. Do you think it's healthy to be eating this much food? When he had finished his enormous breakfast, Mr. Greedy sat back in his chair smiled a very satisfied smile and thought, that was a delicious breakfast, he thought to himself. Now I wonder what would be nice to have for lunch. He decided in order to, in order to work up an appetite for lunch, he would go for a long 
walk. That morning, Mr. Greedy walked and walked and walked. Then he discovered a cave. That's funny, he thought. I don't remember seeing that, seeing that there before. Mr. Greedy, being a curious sort of fellow, decided to explore. He entered the dark cave. Inside, he discovered some giant steps leading upwards. Mr. Greedy, being a curious sort of a fellow, decided to climb them. They were very steep and very difficult to climb. But with much huffing and puffing, Mr. Greedy climbed up and up. At the top of the steps, Mr. Greedy came to a door. It was without doubt the biggest door that Mr. Greedy had ever seen, and it wasn't quite shut. Mr. Greedy, being a curious sort of a fellow, decided to see what was on the other side of that door. So Mr. Greedy squeezed himself through the crack in the door, and there before him was an amazing sight, the biggest room in the world. The floor was as big as a field. The table in the middle of the floor was as big as a house, and the chairs around it were as high as trees. Mr. Greedy felt very small. Then he sniffed, coming from somewhere up on top of the gigantic table was the most delicious foodie smell that Mr. Greedy had ever smelled. Mr. Greedy sniffed again and then decided that he must get up onto that table. So he began to climb up the leg of the enormous chair. It was very difficult and it took him a long time, but eventually Mr. Greedy stood on the table. Everything was larger than life. The salt and pepper pots were both as big as, uh, were both as, big as pillar boxes. There was a bowl of fruit on the table and Mr. Greedy tried to lift one of the oranges. And Mr. Greedy, being Mr. Greedy, took a bite out of one of the apples there. And then he looked around. Over on the other side of the table stood the source of that delicious smell. A huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal plate. And on the plate, huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal sausages that saw, uh, sausages the size of pillows. And huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal potatoes the size of beach balls. And huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal peas the size of cabbages. Mr. Greedy hurried across the table towards the plate and being Mr. Greedy, began to eat. Suddenly, a shadow fell across the plate and Mr. Greedy found himself being picked up by a giant hand looking into the eyes of a real, live giant. And who, thundered the giant, are you? Mr. Greedy was so frightened that he could only just manage to squeak his name. Mr. Greedy, he squeaked. The giant laughed as loud as thunder. Greedy by name and greedy by nature, he bellowed. Well, I think, Mr. Greedy, that you need to be taught a lesson. And what a lesson it was. The giant made Mr. Greedy eat up everything on that huge, enormous, gigantic, colossal plate. When he had finished, Mr. Greedy felt very ill indeed, as if he would have burst at any minute. Now, said the giant in a much quieter voice, 
Do you promise never to be greedy again? Oh, yes, moaned Mr. Greedy. I promise. Very well, said the giant. Then I will let you go. Mr. Greedy climbed down from the table and went out through the door, feeling very fat and extremely miserable. And do you know, from that day to this, Mr. Greedy has kept his promise? And do you know something else as well? Mr. Greedy doesn't look like he used to look anymore. He now looks like this, which I think suits him a lot better. Don't you? So, if you know anybody who's as greedy as Mr. Greedy used to be, you know what you what to tell them, don't you? Beware of giants. <gasps> Mr. Greedy is so greedy. Do you think it's necessary to eat that much? He had such a huge breakfast and then still went to eat the giant's food. But at least he was taught a lesson. I hope you enjoyed that story. But what do they need to do? Slow down. And if you hold up the green light, what can they do? Go. Then they get to have a turn. So they're going to take the traffic lights and you are going to be walking around the house. And if they come at you with the orange light, what are you going to do? Slow down. If they come at you with the green light, what are you going to do? Go! And if they come at you with a red light, what are you going to do? Stop! Okay, something super easy, fun, and it helps us learn the rules of the road. So I hope you enjoy the art this week. Okay, great art. So for this week for Gross Motor, we will be focusing on ball skills. So you will see in your weekly planner, I have given you different ball skills to focus on each day. So, you will need either a tennis ball or a big, either a soccer ball or a basketball or a netball, a bigger ball, and you will be focusing on the specific movements that I have given you for each day. Have fun! This week's activity, we are focusing on our left and our right. So, when you write, do you use your left hand or your right hand? Okay, so for this next activity, I am going to have my back to you just so that you can see properly because on the video, it will come out the wrong way. Okay, so in one hand, I've got, I will be holding a helicopter. And in the other hand, I will be holding a police car. So, just making sure we can see, is the helicopter in my left hand or my right hand? The helicopter is in my left hand, which would mean that the police car is in my right hand. Very good. Now, just making sure we can see, in which hand is the police car? The police car is in my left hand. Very good. And the helicopter is in my right hand. Well done. Sorry that I had to have my back to you. I just needed it to explain this activity. So over here, we are working on left and right. Circle the animals facing the correct direction. So over here, I have given you some ducks. Circle all the ducks that are facing the left. So I want you to see which ducks are facing the left hand side and I want you to circle them. Then I want you to do the same with the bunnies, the squirrels, the turtles, and the pigs. Then I want you to play a game with mom. And I want you to take either a tennis ball or a cup or a spoon. And I want you, mommy to say to you or daddy to say to you, okay, 
Um, Kaylee, can you please hold the spoon in your left hand? And you must put the spoon in your left hand. Then mommy can say, now put it in your right hand and you must put it in your right hand. Then I want you to give the spoon to mom or dad or whatever object you are using. And you must say to them, mommy or daddy, can you put the spoon in your left hand? And they're going to try to trick you and they're going to put it in their right hand. And you must tell them if they are wrong or right. Then mom and dad can play another game. They can put your orange cokey on the right hand side or your purple cokey on the left hand side. And they must say to you, which side is the orange cokey? And you must tell them. So there's lots of games we can play with left and right. Okay.